Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, today you can see we have Hioki in the lab. Pretty cool. Two multimeters to look at. So I'm going to kind of show them both to you today. But we're going to pick one and review it today. The other one, I think to do justice to these two meters, we'll do the other one in another video, okay? But I can't wait to do them both because I want to use them on the bench. If they turn out as good as their specs show, then it'll be pretty awesome. So this is in the quest for, you know, a good mid-tier multimeter or a high-end multimeter without spending too much money. I mean, you know, to get a good bang for the buck, to get some innovation, uh, something that maybe we aren't used to uh, with a certain brand. So I'm looking at other brands that see what they bring to the table okay and by the way you can see my face I'm just fried went snow skiing last weekend had family in town from New York and uh, took a day off work and uh, went skiing and just got fried so excited to go up there I forgot to take care of myself so uh, I also want to apologize for not having a video out it's been a while it's been like a good solid week uh, so I think it's the longest I've gone and yeah, I've just been really busy on the job. My family pulled me away to go skiing. Other than that, I've been buried. But I do have a number of videos that are so close to being done. I just need to do the finishing touches and put them out. So you're going to see a bunch of videos uh, start springing up over the next few days next week. Okay? Uh, all right. So back to this video. Uh, some other videos I did, some reviews. Uh, some folks, you know, suggested I look at Hioki. And I looked into it. Because I knew about the brand, I've used their power quality meters on the job, and uh, do, you know some military defense co companies. So uh, I mean, you know, it's expensive equipment, and it works great. And so, if you're not familiar with the brand, it's Japanese, uh, high-end stuff. You know, name brand equipment. Well, I didn't know they did multimeters because I haven't seen them, but. I looked into it and sure enough, you know, they have three tiers and I don't have a, a meter to show something in the lower tier, the more budget meters. They start around 100 US and go up. Now, what I did get is I reached out to Hioki and a guy named Richard Martyr responded a few days later. First I thought, oh shoot, they're going to just blow me off. But then he actually took the time watched some videos, liked what we are doing, and said, how can I help? And I said, gosh, I'd really like to start reviewing some of your stuff, but, uh, you know, it's expensive buying all this equipment. So he had some loaners, and he asked me which meters I was interested in. I gave him this number here, this number here. There's two meters in this line, okay? This is a high-end line, and this is a 82 there's an 81 the 82 is the best meter now this one there's five meters in the line and I took the highest number again but I don't know if it's necessarily the best meter in the lineup they just have different options and I'm not even sure how the price changes I it looks to me like the lowest number in the series isn't that much different than the highest number the one I got so I don't know if the price increments like the numbers do. Is what, I guess what I'm trying to say. This one is $211, $211 list, and that's what you can find on Amazon. This guy is $521 list, and I think it's four. Um, what was that? 46. It's just under 450 on Amazon. So I have links below. Please use the links. Supports the channel. Doesn't cost you anything extra. So appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, down to these two meters. I think this guy, this one looks like the Superman of meters, 60,000 counts, 100 kilohertz bandwidth. I mean, crazy good. I've got, you know, a competitor back here in a different color that's over 700 bucks. And this one has recording features. And uh, you know what? If this one works as well as a spec show, this guy is a, a deal. I mean for a high-end meter so not too too expensive in comparison to competitors at least I don't think so all right so this guy is 
uh, the electrician's version of, of these five uh, models. And so what makes an electrician's uh, version? I've reviewed um, a few of them, not, you know, just recently. The Fluke 117, I compare it to the Fluke 18B Plus. And I also compare it to the Testo over here. I don't know if it's in the shot or not, if you can see that. But uh, this Testo, I'm really impressed with. Um, right now, that's one of my favorite meters. Why are these electrician style? They're also great for the bench. So the features that make them great for electrician meters is that, first of all, they're durable. The other thing is the features they come with. They have a low-pass filter. So this one has a two-stage filter, low-pass. So that's great. If you're working with VFD, you know, variable frequency drives, uh, noisy motors, uh, inverters, that kind of thing, then this can help filter out the noise, give you good readings, okay? The other thing is, and the Fluke 117 did not have that, but it did have this next feature, which is a low impedance, low Z. And that's good for ghost voltage or phantom voltages. So, you know, if you have a set of cables bundled in with some other cables, and maybe the set you're taking a measurement on, you think you open up the breaker, but you read some voltage. Well, with the low Z, it'll drain off that energy that was induced by those other cables. And you'll see that, oh, yeah, I really don't have any voltage on them. So that's the low Z feature. And those are two of the more common features. Another one is, well, another one, I guess, is non-contact voltage these days, right? Uh, or volt alert, it's also called by some people. I think that's what it's called on this meter. So, uh, you know, and this one actually, like the Fluke 117, has a high sensitivity and a low sensitivity mode. The 117, the high sensitivity was too sensitive. It didn't like me touching it. <laughs> Every time I touched it, it would beep. So I have to admit that I got rid of that meter. That was one of the reasons. Uh, another one was, well, I'll tell you, the test leads. It's like this 18B+. Plus. I don't know what this new material is. Well, I kind of forgot what that is called. But anyway, it's not a PVC. It's just really stiff material. And so I just wasn't impressed with, you know, what, what you're getting for the money on that meter. And I'll probably get rid of this 18B plus two. So, uh, so sorry I don't have it. But since the Fluke uh, 117 is pretty well known with electricians, I'm going to use that spec wise to compare to this guy okay yeah so i'll show that at the end of the video i think uh put a list together and compare them but i'll kind of talk about maybe through the video we'll see so another feature this guy has which you don't commonly see uh, you co don't commonly see well i'm trying to think where i've seen all these features in one meter this one also has a 4 to 20 milliamp range which is great for instrumentation guys controls people where if you have, let's say, a cable going 5 feet or 20 feet or 50 or 100 feet, if you send a voltage to monitor those controls, you're going to have voltage drops. But if you send a current, then you can push the current through that cable and the current's not going to change. The electrons aren't going to get lost on their way. <laughs> so 4 to 20 milliamps is kind of a range they'll work in. So 20 milliamps would be, a, say, 100%. And I think this meter, we'll see, but I think it reads it out in percentage. It has a dual display, so uh, yeah. Let's bring the camera over, jump into this. Uh, we'll pop the hood too, look underneath, see what it looks like inside. Really curious. Um, so they are made in Japan. It says made in Japan right here. Uh, Japanese company, meters made in Japan. So that's pretty cool that they're still doing that. Uh, I don't know a lot about uh, the Japanese culture as far as businesses go if they send things to China like a lot of American companies do but at least in this case these are meters both of them made in Japan so there you go let's bring the camera over take a look at these things okay so let me just point out some of the highlights here it's a uh, thousand volts it's cat 3 cap 4 so cat 3000 cap 4 600 but they also talk about this 1700 volts DC. So, and that's for the 4254. So that's what I mean by the series. This is a 56. So this box 
is made for all guys in the series and there you go that's the different models there's options bundled accessories I think we're just gonna get test seeds here well and it says some batteries and by the way there's four okay drop proof you know that's one meter and it's also it has an IP uh, 42 rating I saw somewhere so and then down here we have the CE mark now when you come from a manufacturer like this, you can trust, I feel like you can trust that they've actually tested to that mark the same as UL or anybody else would. They've tested to that uh, standard. So this one, we'll just start with the bottom. Bunch of recycled stuff, CE again. Again, both of them made in Japan. Uh, now this one has an 81 to 82. 81 has a clamp on measurement mode where you can click it into but anyway this is the 82 high accuracy wide band that's 100 kilohertz the high accuracy is a 60,000 count I mean look at all those digits holy cow you know it's a nice bar graph on this one okay uh, the filter function same as this I think we'll see if they operate differently but they both have the filter function peak measurements DC plus AC Oh, there's a memory function. Terminal shutters. You can see them here in the picture. Pretty, pretty safe. You can't put it in the wrong mode because it won't allow you to. So that might be one of the safest ways to do it. Okay, let me flip that over and show you the back backs of both these boxes, I guess. Okay, there's a communication package. You know, you can put hangers on both of them, I'm sure. Carrying case, that kind of stuff, but... Yeah, there we go. Uh, here's the filter kind of showing a picture of the harmonics. And then a memory for, they can say, UPS uh, maintenance. So 400 data max. So that's pretty cool. Okay, I've taken the contents out of the box. And you can see the manual. There's some kind of uh, operating precautions kind of safety thing, I guess, in a bunch of different languages. But you know what? Um, this is a pretty nice manual. We'll look at a couple highlights in here, but yeah, that's, you can see that's pretty in-depth manual. Okay, let's just pull these guys out of here. Again, four batteries, which I know some people like instead of the two. You get a little more juice, a little more voltage in there. Now these leads, they look like they're PVC. They're not, I mean, they're flexible. They're not like those, uh, you know, other leads I was looking at that were so stiff. These these guys look like your typical PVC type leads, and they feel like they have the silicon kind of handle grip, you know, the kind of sticky, rubbery grip. And wow, look at that! They actually went to the trouble and get this apart. Wow, those things are on there, uh, gold tipped. If you can see that, so. That's nice. All right, and it does have a 90 degree C rating, 1000 volts AC, 1200 volts DC. All right, I'm gonna just show you quickly the difference between different models, okay? You can pause and look at this. I'm just gonna page it over so you can see. Here's check mark showing what you get with each different model. So just thought I'd show you that. So on these two models, you can see the microamp input. On this one, it's just amps. And they do have the communication port on the smaller guy even. And then here's your options. Now, something to point out is the low Z and the filter mode. That's great for electrical use. And it does have a neat battery indicator. Instead of just uh, something blinking on you when it's running out, it has a gauge that we're kind of used to with our phones. And then the spec uh, back here, it'll actually show you the voltages these are meant for. But you can see it has a voltage, you know, uh, indication, lights up. So we'll, we'll check that out. And to the point of the battery, you'll get this uh, indication for a few seconds before it shuts down. And it tells you at what voltage. And there is a method to check for the fuse. If you think it's um, opened, you can check it with this method. This is used by some of the other 
higher end companies. Some actually just tell you and then some have a way to measure that. Darn, I was looking for the fire stick method on the continuity check, but they don't have that. They just kind of show how you can check out a cord and diode function. It'll show the voltage, the bar graph, and it has five volts um, or less as a open voltage circuit, but we'll see how that works. So measuring current between the different models, uh, the 53 model has the microamps, the 53 model also does this 4 to 20 milliamp. Uh, if you guys are familiar with that, here's 420 milliamp on the 52 and 56 as well. But the 53 will do microamps, milliamps, and amps, where the 52 and 56 are doing amps. Examples of opening a circuit for a flame detector, you know, or any kind of circuit. You open the circuit, you measure the current going through it, right? And then on this one, 4 to 20 milliamp conversion, same kind of thing, you open it up and it'll give you a percentage value of your 4 to 20 milliamp range. And then of course there is this option for the current clamp probe for the 53, 55, 56 and it just explains how you do that. It kind of has a BNC connector it looks like that connects to this converter and so you may be able to use maybe anybody's current probe to do that. And just showing you the voltage detect function, it has that and these models here have that, so this one does. But here's a high and low sensitivity. So 40 volts for the high, 80 volts for the low sensitivity. So that's pretty cool. Now this is a feature that I know a lot of you guys will like. Uh, there's the normal hold that Whenever you see a hold on a multimeter, that's what you expect to happen. But then on some meters, you actually have this, an uh, auto hold. And hold the hold button down for one second, and then it goes into auto hold. So I know that a lot of you guys will like that feature because that's not often offered. But there we go. And here's the conditions for auto hold. And they're kind of showing a wave shape if you can see that. And this is a cool feature, uh, the noise filter. So there's our setup here. Now here's the bandwidth, how it rolls off. So you can turn it off. In that case, it goes out to about, you can see about two kilohertz before it rolls off. Or you can set it at 500 hertz or 100 hertz to really filter out stuff. So if you wanna really, if you got a lot of noise, put it down this. So that's pretty neat that you have these extra modes of operation. All right, on the meter, the filter button above it, you see the rail. And above the hold, you have an auto. But So that kind of gives you an indication how those things work. But let me just show you this. Okay, so I just want to point out the max min average function works this way. Uh, it's awesome that you have a dual display. Well, it has several lines, right? But also over here, the, the relative or you know, the zeroing out function, it's really cool. And it just says it doesn't work on the auto V diode or electric charge, which, you know, that would make sense, I guess. But just wanted to point that out. And if you have a model that does temperature, then you can get the relative, and well, you get the change of and the actual temperature. So dual display is really nice for that. And you can see the relative right above the filter over here on the meter. But what I thought was really neat about that is they go a step further. You can perform a zeroing adjustment, which seems like a lot like a relative, but it actually is almost like a calibration. So in resistance, you touch the leads together. In capacitance, you open them up, but you hold the filter down for one second and it zeroes out the meter. So that's a, a little bit different than a relative, which, you know, that's pretty neat. And then uh, two functions that a lot of us like to see is this backlight will work for 40 seconds, which is better than those ones that work for only like 10 or 15 seconds. It's so annoying. 40 seconds is a, a decent amount of time. I like that. But you can also override that. Okay. But in auto power off, this is a really uh, kind of neat way. It works for 15 minutes, which is also a nice length of time. But when it goes into sleep mode, it'll actually turn itself completely off in 45 minutes. So that's a battery saving uh, where you know where they just stay in sleep mode, they're using a little bit 
more power generally and then you have to hit it within 30 seconds to bring it out of sleep mode but yeah you can override the auto power function by powering it up in a certain mode okay so just over here the plus minus judgment function it, it it you know when you're taking measurements you can look at a voltage and the buzzer will go off and red led will light up if the voltage isn't as high as it should be so that's nice for troubleshooting and this is your this is your power on table so you can see how to override your automatic power your buzzer so yeah yes you can control your buzzer your backlight the plus minus and you can also check your software version or turn on the display to look at all the segments make sure they're working and this one's kind of interesting um, checking the adjustment source okay here's the temperature changing from Celsius to Fahrenheit so yes you can do that and this is a uh, general specs this tells you the voltage of the battery with each of these indicators the dimensions your all this stuff so here's your IP42 rating and this is a nice page electrical characteristics noise rejections minus 60 dB common mode noise 100 dB for DC and 60 for AC so here's your response times shows you how fast this meter is uh, the display modes five times a second and then dielectric strength 8.5 thousand volts sine wave your maximum rated voltages and yeah so nice page of information and just continue that on there's the rest of the information there 36 milli volt amps your four batteries and here's your accuracy table I'll just show you this quickly in case you want to glance at this one thing just going back to this some of the highlights the DC accuracy is 0.3 percent generally plus minus five digits but look at this it does have a 600 millivolt scale which is 0.2 percent plus minus five digits so they call that high accuracy that's pretty cool and that's uh you get that on these meters here and just point out the continuity thresholds it is 25 ohms plus minus 10 ohms and 245 ohms it's the off threshold you get the buzzer and a red led and that's in the 600 ohm range that the meter puts itself in all right and the diode function that we're always interested in uh, it says 1.5 volt range 5 volt open circuit we'll have to see how that works half milliamp uh, this guy has a buzzer when the threshold is hit on the diode and the LED blinks too. And then if it's a short, you get a continuous buzzer and that's if the short's less than 0.15 volts and you get a red light. All right, so let's finally open up the meter here. You know, right away, I mean, when I saw the meter, it just looked like a nice meter, nice size display. And I see a little thing here that must be where, where the red LED is, but it has a nice feel. This is has that kind of silicone feel that's smooth, but it's somewhat rigid. It's not super soft. It does. I mean, it is soft. You know what I mean? But it's. Uh, I mean, it is. It is soft, but not gushy soft. Now, right away, what I notice is it does have the curvature, which makes it nice to fit in your hand. And it is a good size meter, uh, but it has these ridges that come up, you know. So this obviously protects the display, but this looks like it's protecting this portion of the meter as well. So that's kind of neat, right? I mean, that's just built into the rubber holster here. The other thing is this is kind of curved, which makes sense because when it drops, you don't have a blunt contact on any surface. So... You get the extra ribbing on the sides and a little protection in the middle so you don't have that jarring hit. Same on the top. So that that's pretty ingenious, I think, to shape the rubber that way. So yeah, you see how this is inset here? And it has a drop test on the rubber here. <laughs> okay, there's your Hioki. Now, one thing you can tell, it's a nice stiff uh, stand which pretty square which I like because 
Now these things are flexible. They're always softer on here, most meters, and this is stiffer up here, which is nice because it'll hold your it'll hold your lead when you want to use that as a second hand. And there's your little uh, optical inputs for your computer. And here's a little plastic thing for your magnetic holders. So you see one metal screw here. That's all I see right now. But what I do see is you can see the map here for the different meters and the different fuses that go in them. So that's nice. And then this is excellent that they actually have, you don't have to go to the manual when you're powering it up. It actually will tell you how to turn off the buzzer, the backlight, or or the auto power off or even the range so pretty nice okay let's just take off this holster I generally start the big end first yeah you can see this I mean it's it's pretty stiff I mean it's strong but it has that nice coating on the outside. On the inside, it's a little slicker. It's a TPE material. Okay. You got the four screws on the outside and the one holding the batteries in. Let's get some batteries in this guy. Wow, that was easy. Okay. Yeah, that screw is captured. That's interesting. You know, you don't see captured screws that often. That's really nice. And a nice big insert. Now this is awesome. The batteries are separated from the fuse by this wall around the batteries. And also this plastic wall here. You can see how this kind of drops in. Look how deep that channel is. This is PPE on this. Okay, so nice deep channel. And it has this double channel right here for this little ridge right here to really make that strong. So the high, imp I mean, look at that fuse. It's an HRC fuse for sure. I'm going to pull that fuse out. But I like the battery compartment being separate. You don't see a circuit board. So if the batteries leak in that, um, it's going to be hard for it to get down the board and damage the board. If something happens, it's there's some electrical isolation. It's 11 amps. 1,000 volts AC DC, 50,000 amps uh, for AC rupture, and 30,000 amps for DC. There's our UL on it. Same thing on this. The wow, you can see the the bat, uh, the fuse contacts go right down the board, and there's four big old vias or something on each one, but there's very little circuitry or board exposed. You got this plastic here so if the fuse was to rupture it's keeping it off the board. So very nice. Alright that's what it looks like with the Toshiba batteries that came with it. Toshiba another good Japanese brand name. Okay it looks like it's got a little couple hooks here. Drops in very nicely. That was a large diameter screw head. All right, guys, let's power this thing on and see what it looks like, okay? Um, all right, AC, DC. Just looking at all the different things in the display, see what shows up. There's your low Z. Okay, uh, filter's off right now. If I hit it again, 100 hertz, 500 hertz. And it shows me the filter up here that I've got a filter on. Reminds me of that. Okay, that's your auto V where it'll auto detect AC or DC volts. And that's our continuity check. Just kind of blinking away, telling us it's in a 600 ohm range. It says over right here. And it has that little symbol. Okay, here's our ohm range. Oh, look at that 60 meg. Oh, that is really cool. It tells you what range that you're in. It's over 60 megs. 600 ohms, so sit here and change your ranges. Okay, go back into auto by holding it down. Now, the backlight's not super bright. Let me, I got so many lights in here, it's kind of hard to tell. 
There's the backlight. Yeah, I have so many lights in here, it's hard to tell. But yeah, you can tell it's not super bright. But it is very well, very evenly lit. Got some uh, other lights over here kind of reflecting into the display. All right, our capacitance mode. Oh, that's really interesting that it shows you your max range in each feature. Now, if you have a probe, you use this, and it shows you your probe up here. Your dual display. Oh, that was interesting. So in amps, it shows the percentage for the 4 to 20 milliamp. You notice that when I first flipped over? shows it there. And then there's our low range. I guess it's a range selection and high range. All right, guys. So in the voltage detect and the high sensitivity, here's my power cord. I've got the voltage just under 40 volts. And if I go to low sensitivity, it's not going to sense that at all. Because it's bare, it's even in the threshold of the high sensitivity not working. Because that's uh, under 40 volts. Okay, then if I'm at, say, 50 volts, high sensitivity seems to work really well. If I go back to low and I'm at 50 volts, it's working on low sensitivity there too. Just barely, right? Then if I bring it up to normal 120, Okay, so that's what that seems to work like. Guys, I'm just going to sh uh, show you some of these auto power features. Hold the range down, turn up one spot. That's the version of software. That there uh, indicates that uh, Hioki is the one that set it up. And that right there shows the entire display, all the segments lit up. So a lot of meters will have you hold the hold button down. So that's kind of a common feature. And look, APS off. Then I let go. So automatic power uh, switches off. If you want to turn off the, the beeper, if you're one of those people who don't like a beeper, then you hold the filter down and turn it on. Look, beep off. I saw a review where someone complained that when they checked diodes that the beeper doesn't go off. And they thought that, or continuity, they thought that you know, in some modes, the, that beeper should always work, which I kind of disagree with because if you want to turn off the beeper, it's because you don't want to hear it. You're working in an environment where maybe you're in a cubicle environment and you're at your desk and you don't want to bother the people around you. So you don't want to have two beeper functions or maybe that'd be really cool if you could go, oh, I want to select this beeper or that beeper. But anyway, just want to make that point. And also what I saw is on that review, was that somebody grabbed the meter and tried to twist it and to me that feels very solid and I've got pretty strong hands so um, yeah and why you would twist the meter like this I don't know but yeah I have no idea why you'd want to do that but anyway this meter feels very rigid just want to make that point because I saw that on a review as well and then uh, finally how do you turn off the backlight well pretty obvious hold the backlight down and turn it on. Look, backlight A off. So now when you turn on your backlight, it's going to stay on. And, you know, I guess if it was really bright, it'd go through your battery pretty fast. So, okay, one thing I can tell you as I pop off these protectors, these are the kind of leads that have the little protective uh, plastic jobber there, which I'm not absolutely positive why that's there. I think it's to protect when it slides in, I, I'm guessing. But maybe the hold the the banana jacks keep their shape. I I just noticed that some of the nicer meter leads do that. And they do fit very securely. They have a, kind of a positive click when you push them in. All right, so let's do a diode check. Diodes checks are one thing that is, you know, meters do them differently, I guess. Here, oh, let me take out that cap too. Holy cow. I like how that meter shows you what it's looking for. Okay, that's kind of interesting, huh? That's reading two diodes because that's reverse, so that's a bridge rectifier. And that's correct. So, pretty neat. It has kind of a beep beep and it gives you the value. But if, uh, if it were to be short, 
Yeah, that's pretty nice. I like those gold tips. All right, guys, I have a shocky diode here. Let me just show you the diode mode. 0 0.122, 0 0.122, reverse direction, just flashes. Okay, now when I go to the LED, it, it does light it up, but it's probably above the voltage because it's just blinking. But it lights up the green, and lights up the blue. And it lights up the white one, which is a hard one. So it lights them up, but it doesn't tell you the voltage. Just for fun, let's do that ohm measurement. See, look, we're in 60 meg. That's the top. So it does go up to 60 meg, by the way. And look, it's flashing. And so we're going to do the check our fuse. Yep, fuse is good. All right, guys. So what we could have done first is do that kind of zero adjustment, right? Where you just hold the leads together and then you hold the filter for one second. So let's hold those together. You got 0.2 ohms, 0.1 ohms. Not bad. There we go. Zeroes them out. And it does show the relative mold up there. So let's measure capacitor. But before we do, let's go ahead and zero it out. So you just leave the leads open because capacitor looks like an open, right? Okay, then we have to put it in capacitor mode. So I'm just going to go all the way off and then on again and then hold the filter down. Okay, I see the relative again. So let's measure a capacitor I have sitting right up here. Ah, one microfarad, that's what that cap is supposed to be. So pretty cool. Let's go read a big capacitor. Let's read these guys. Uh, let's flip them over and we'll go minus to minus terminal. This is a big capacitor bank, you can tell. Okay, it's saying it's over 10 millifarads, which it is. It usually measures around 24. So this guy only goes up to 10 millifarads. So, yeah, instead of just leaving you guessing, it eventually comes up. But did you hear the little chirps along the way? Happen to have a 10 millifarad cap. I hear it chirping as it goes through the different ranges. It does take a little while, but it does come up with the value. I find that these are just a little bit under 10 millifarads, so pretty good. Let's just check a cap that's kind of in the middle. This is 3600. It's a pretty big cap. Yeah, looks like it's right there. All right, we have a 180 microfarad cap. Let's try something like that. All right, that looks good. Let's do that continuity test. Uh, we got grounded the input of this amplifier and grounded the output. Very fast. I don't know if you need anything faster than that. That's about as fast as I've heard, I think. And it gives you the value. You see the red light up there? That red light's nice if you're sitting here looking at the meter. It'd have to be kind of dark if you were in a dark room to, you know, to have it helpful if you couldn't see the meter display. So if you can see the meter display, the red light's just the extra indication, I think. But really that sound, is it loud enough you could hear it if you're underneath the dashboard? I think so. It's got a nice kind of piercing tone. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be doing that in your office cubicle. Back to diode checking. Here's a transistor in circuit. Yeah. Looks good. Gives me a chirp chirp. If I reverse the leads, it's open. And 1.4 going across. So, yeah, looks good. Okay, uh, some more capacitor in circuit testing. I think it's just kind of interesting. I've got all these caps in this amplifier. And if I reach over here, I can reach down inside here and hit the pins of, I'm gonna pick this cap here so I can get to the pins. I like the way it chirps as it goes through the ranges. Okay, 600 microfarads. 
Okay, I believe that because I've got 470 and then downstream there's some other capacitors. So, okay. It's nice to see if you can do in circuit testing. For small capacitors, that's a one nanofarad. Doesn't seem to want to, to want to read that one. That's a two nanofarad. It reads that. That's a ten. And one mic. So yeah. So it seems like down to two nanofarads. Okay. So let's do some AC testing. Got the leads here kind of wired up to my power cable here, AC power. And I'm just gonna, and you can see the 60 hertz, I got one volt AC. See how fast it goes through the ranges? It just, sometimes range, you know, some meters you might be used to using, they go OL for a minute. You see that for just a flash. This goes through that range very quickly. Okay, so I'll just move the AC power around just so you can watch. You can see how fast that bar graph is. I'm just going to go through some of the lower ranges so you can see it jumping through ranges. It goes very fast. So one thing I saw in these meters is they're just fast meters. And an example of the 6,000 counts as we approach 6. We uh, lose that decimal place like you would on a 6,000 count meter. Okay, so I have this connected to my to my load bank, my resistor load bank. Okay, I've got it set down at one ohm, and and it's it's not you know calibrated of course, but anyway. So I just want to step it up so you can see how fast the meter steps through the ranges. So that's going from one ohm to 100 k ohm. And again, if you get close to that 6,000 count, you see it getting close, closer, and then it drops a decimal point. So that's your 6,000 count. All right, guys, and it's 100 kilohertz capable, so there's 100 kilohertz just right. There we go, 9999. That's what my generator is saying. So let's go over here and just drop it down. Let's go to the low end, okay? Let's drop it all the way down. Okay, 900 hertz. I want to drop it down where we can see that bar graph do something. There we go, 30 hertz. Look at that, 30 hertz, that thing's actually giving an indication. Kind of bouncing around, that's pretty cool. 20 hertz. I'm going to try to go up in amplitude. Try to get right close to the 6,000. You know, if I go 6,000, we're going to lose a digit, right? So I'm going to go right below that. So we see a bunch of digits, see a bunch of resolution. And then let's go back to frequency and just see what that bar graph. Look at that bar graph, man. That's 10 hertz. That's pretty cool. 5 hertz. And by the way, you, you see the indication up here on the screen, right? It's giving us our frequency. Let's go down to one hertz, see if we can do that. Oh, did we lose it? That's three. There's five. So five hertz at five volts. Underneath that, we kind of lose the hertz. I'm wondering if we change the amplitude down. That's 14 volts peak to peak right now. Okay, there we go. I was wondering if at a lower amplitude we'd see frequency come back. All right, let's try a different wave shape. Let's try square wave. Okay, guys, I'm set at two volts RMS on my generator and 12 hertz, and it's a square wave. That's kind of cool. Let's go to frequency, drop that down. Okay, I'm only at two hertz. That's probably too low. I think five hertz was the... Spot before, oh, there we go. Five hertz, right on the cusp. Five to six hertz where it turns on. That's pretty cool though. And now we could go up to, with the square wave, let's say if we can go up to 500 hertz. There's our two volts RMS. Let's go up in frequency and see where it rolls off. 
just barely started to 900 it's a one kilohertz so one kilohertz we're just barely down let's just keep going up 2k now on the curves we saw it said 2k right and it looks like that's where it is that's where it falls off so between 2 and 3k it takes a jump so square wave up to 1k 2k you get a pretty good reading let's try that filter just see what that does Okay, off. Let's turn it on. 100 hertz. Look at that, man. Well, it totally filters out the signal. So that filter is working. Okay, let's go to 500 hertz. Man, that works awesome. Let's bring down the frequency. There we go. Look, there's uh, 700 hertz. Okay, 500 hertz. Looks pretty good. Let's go to 100 hertz. Okay, here we are. There's 300 start just starting to 500 hertz it starts doing at 700 hertz yeah so there's your filter that's pretty cool that could come in handy and by the way guys it is nice to have a meter that has a manual range override because when you're taking readings and if it's jumping around and let's say if you're reading 160 volts when it comes up on your on your motor or 200 if if you're letting an auto range from the low scale all the way up you're sometimes waiting for it this meter is actually really fast but on a slower meter that's even more important is get it up in the range you want then when you turn on your power you, you just, the meter reacts quicker this meter is actually super fast Okay, guys, we're still on the generator. I just want to show you something here. Let's drop this voltage down. So let's say you want to hold that. Yeah, we know how that works, right? And, you know, you can change voltage. You can hit hold again, hold on, hold off. Okay, I want to show you this bar graph. Watch the bar graph as I go up in voltage. It shows you that your voltage has just changed on you. So if you look at the bars, you're up to three volts now. You know, if I hit hold again, it goes away and I'm there and I can re-hold it okay another way you can do it is if you hold this down and it kind of beeps a couple times stops flashing okay now if I go up in voltage you see the bar graph still going still looks like it works the same way but look it changes for you so it went to another range and it captured that uh, voltage so pretty cool, right? And then if you just want to override it and not wait for it to make a decision, just hit hold again and it captures the next voltage. But if it goes out of range, it'll tell you. I mean, it'll change the voltage to that next range. I don't know if, and it does it in the reverse direction. So that's pretty cool. That's your auto hold button. Now let's go back to manual hold. Let me turn that off. Okay, if you go to that hold button, and if you go up in voltage, watch what happens when it goes out of range. You get a red LED. Pretty cool meter. You know, and of course, if you're up in this mode here, this auto, it just automatically selects which voltage, AC or DC, to tell you, you know, to read. And so that's pretty nice. If you're just probing around a circuit that has both AC and DC voltage, it's nice to have that auto function um, and it also has a low Z so if there's some energy left on the cable the ghost or phantom voltage you know you got that low Z to take that away all right I thought it'd be interesting to do the uh, 4 to 20 milliamp thing you can see the percentage up here and the current that it's taking my power supply it not real sensitive at the low current so but yeah, you can see the percentage decreasing, the current dropping down to four, and then right at four milliamps, you'll see the percentage jump up, and right up to 20 milliamps, you see almost 97%. And then once you go over that, of course, you're not in that four to 20 milliamp range that they use for instrumentation. Now you're just reading current. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of show that how that works pretty cool I think okay like I say it's oh, there we go now as we approach six we'll take the next jump 
And there we go. There's your current readings. So, you see how fast that meter switches through ranges, right? Some meters that we're used to using, they go blank. And they use it, even show you OL for just a flash before they change. But this thing is super quick. All right? Yeah, I like the speed. Can't wait to open this guy up and play with it. That'll be the next uh, review, okay? and we'll open it up and look inside yeah and to open this thing up uh, you have to take it all apart the four screws right here the captured screw and the battery case and you know remember this is on the board and it has plastic underneath it so you have to take the fuse out you know i think they leave this little notch i i noticed that as i was doing it like this way before i was like oh i should have reached over here because i think that's what that notch is for <laughs> that was well thought out Okay, let's zoom in on this guy when I open this. Let's, so you can get a good look at it. Okay, let's open this thing. Wow, that's pretty snug. Okay, right away. Wow, that, that looks really clean. Okay, right, I just want to talk about this. Look how thick that lip is. I could feel how snug it was as I was pulling it out. There's those nice double prongs. It looks like it's all gold plated. Very nice touch. The features in the plastic make this very strong. Also, I think the shape, I think, adds rigidity to it and strength. You see these light pipes for the optical sensors down on the board? Man, they're so small, it's hard to even see them. At this point, uh, pretty impressed with what I see. It just looks very clean. Look at the way the uh, resistors are lined up in between these two plastic barriers uh, the big thick PTC right here close to the terminal that's your high voltage resistor I assume here's another resistor there's that those are these arc suppressors I believe man they're pretty good size too difference between those and MOVs MOVs uh, they just clamp so they're clamping all the energy to a certain voltage these I believe work like gas discharge tubes they just arc they basically crowbar or drop to zero the surge current or surge voltage I see large diodes in here there's the gold contacts on the board so that's a really nice touch has the Hioki name on the board so you can tell it's made by them has a fuse rating right on the board in case you've lost a fuse and these terminals are very nice screwed down contact on both ends but very sparse and open and look at the current shunt uh, you know for me I, I I kind of favor this kind of current shunt it just seems more precise uh, you know way to do it than to use some big old piece of metal that you have to shape and size for the homage but I see lots of vias in the board to take signals through to the other layers so just big large traces down here and it looks like good isolation features set into the thing and this deep channel around the plastic to accept this guy into it and we have our shield which you know if higher end meter especially something that says it's for you know quiet operation you'd expect to see a shield inside all that noise you know the specs on the noise I think this is an inductor so there's probably some power supply up in here probably running the communications uh, for the uh, light the optical readouts okay, I'll take off this guy so these these are often made out of mu metal uh, it's not just a piece of tin it's nice magnetically coupled material And from the looks of it, it's designed in a way where up here there's not a contact, or here there's a partial contact, but it looks like most of that shield contact is right here. And wow, this thing has some large chips in it. Let's take a close look. All right, pretty nice. A lot of circuitry there. Let's see if this works. It has Hioki uh, chips in there, it looks like. 
Let's just scan down to the board. All right, so I took one more screw out here to see if we can open this. Nice, comes off nice and clean. All right, so you know what? I'm just gonna put this right here for a moment just so we can look at this. Uh, I like this. See the plastic isolator there, protection circuit? And it has these features here. I don't see where they, let's see where they might connect. Okay, here we go. They have these guys sitting in. So this guy is, okay, here's some more high voltage resistors. You see the cutouts in the board. I see some uh, some grease here, some grease here. So it's just between the plastic pieces. I understand they use a rubber O-ring down here uh, to keep debris from coming inside the meter. And the, yeah, you can see the big old separators here for, I guess this guy fits down in there. And then uh, those separators come up in between these resistors so that high voltage is going up to this piece of plastic through here, this FR4 circuit board, but it's between these two channels. Uh, pretty cool way of doing that. Yeah, that is, that board, it feels, there's some weight to it. Uh, pretty high quality, I think. i really impressed with the build quality. These uh, holes, the, the screws here, you can see, they're pretty girthy and of course machine threaded but yeah they I mean the way the fuses are put down in four quadrants it's just built very very sturdy where I read was that they were you know interested in keeping debris out the four, IP rating the ingress protection rating four two so the four is for the debris or uh, that kind of stuff and and that's why they put the o-ring in but yeah it does look sealed very well like say there's only a you know where the fuses have to reach down through the plastic but they use this plastic here to help shield the board so there's very and the of course the batteries so when you're replacing fuses or batteries there's very little ingress into the board which you know some meters you have to open them up to get to the fuses right well any kind of dust debris that gets into your meter if you're not careful to blow it out is a problem or a potential problem so i gotta say this came apart went together you know pretty straightforward pretty easy which is a sign of good build quality i think and it's always nice to see that it still works after you've taken it apart so pretty sweet meter <clears throat> All right, guys, so what do you think? Uh, I'm pretty impressed with this meter. And you know what? Look how flexible the leads are and how they've straightened right out. So they almost felt like uh, silicone. Silic they almost felt like silicone. So I looked into it. Uh, I, didn't, I thought they were PVC, just flexible PVC. And sure enough, that's what they are. The model number on the cable shows that they're PVC. Uh, 1000 volts rated for AC, 1200 for DC, and they are the 18 gauge version. And that's the cable. The ends of them feel like silicone grips, silicone plugs here, with the gold plating tips. So, pretty nice. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is the chip in here that we saw. The Hioki chip, the one that said the Hioki on it. I looked into that, and, and at their website, they also showed that they make that chip. So... And it looks like it's made in Japan. So it looks like they are a Japanese company making their stuff in Japan and even the chips inside. That's pretty impressive. The CE mark, the safety mark, uh, they, you know, that's a self test and they have a certificate of conformity. So, you know, maybe they feel like, hey, our stuff we can test and we're going to test it and they don't feel like they need to go third party in their country maybe they're test uh trusted that way and you know what i've used some of their stuff i'm somewhat familiar with them and i think i'm going to trust their rating so it's cat 3 cat 4 rated i think i would trust that as well 
Now the stand, by the way, I don't know if I pointed that out, but it is a one of the hard plastic stands, a uh, stable stand, and oh, and something I don't know if you guys can see, it says APS when it goes auto, auto power safe mode, and then it stays there for a while, the, the times I gave you before, and then it actually turns itself off, but it's in sleep mode right now. So it kind of shows you that, and you just hit any button that turns on. So, all right. Um, I can't wait to open up what I'm going to call the Super Manometers because if it performs as well as this one and it has those specs, that's got to be the Superman. Uh, okay, and also over the last few days I've uh, used this meter on the bench as I've been sneaking in uh, this video. And as I'm going on these little small surface mount parts, I hear a little chirp chirp and I look over and I see the voltage. I'm like, wow, cool. So, uh, or ohms or whatever I have to be testing. So there's those. It gives us a chirp chirp like hey bud I got the measurement for you it's kind of nice because I know that then I I know that you know I've made contact and I'm touching the right spot and I can look over and so I, I haven't had a meter to do that and I like it now if you don't like sounds some people don't like chirping sounds or buzzing sounds uh, you can turn off you know you can defeat the the buzzer turn it off and you turn on the meter okay but anyway it's a very fast meter like they say the response time i've noticed that it is it does seem like like fast i don't know if there's any meter faster but it's certainly very fast uh so can't wait to open this one hey let me show you my board okay okay just gonna go over uh comparison spec real fast with the fluke 117. you know a lot of people say hey uh everything has to stand up to a fluke so <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that anymore. And by the way, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video because I'm sure I'm getting some thumbs down just for saying that. Anyway, all the stuff in black, common specs between both meters. 6,000 count, ingress protection rating, 42, uh, max 10 millifarads, the low Z for the Phantom Ghost Voltage, three year warranty, auto volt detect. You know, that's when you put it in that one mode where it'll automatically switch between AC and DC voltage. So if you're in a panel that has both, it's just really convenient reading that way. Uh, min, max, av. I don't know if they both work exactly the same, but eh, pretty close probably. I don't know. Uh, hold, they both have that. Uh, Hioki also has that auto hold, you know, so that if you're going up in range or down in range, it'll automatically switch the voltage for you and tell you what the new... Uh, you know what it captures okay uh, volt alert they both have two sensitivity levels the fluke 117 I thought was too sensitive I, I couldn't even touch it without it going off the uh, Hioki seems like they work really well I think the high sensitivity is set for supposed to work around 40 volts it looks like it works below and above that and the low sensitivity I think was at 80 volts or 60 volts and anyway they both uh, overlap they both work great I didn't see a too sensitive level but proper sensitivity I think I want to say fluke is a little more accurate for DC 0.2 percent plus two digits versus 0.3 plus three digits uh, but on AC the Hioki is a little more accurate 1.8 with three digits versus two percent plus three digits I think it's kind of splitting hairs I think they're both close enough I don't I I think you'd agree that yeah it's six is there oh they both have the Hertz I forgot that one but with the fluke you have to hit the yellow button to pull up Hertz where on the heel key it shows the Hertz and the voltage at the same time dual displays are awesome made in Malaysia some people think that some fluke 117s are made in the US some are made in Malaysia but I think they're all made in Malaysia and so uh, just like this other the 18B plus, you know, that series meters, they're made in China and I don't even think they're supposed to be sold to the US. I think I had to buy mine on eBay. And uh, some people think there's US versions, but as far as I know, they're all made in China, just like these are all made in Malaysia. Hayoki is a Japanese company and they're both these meters are made in Japan. So there we go. There's our list. Oh, price. Uh, Amazon list price is 211 okay. Uh, the fluke uh, list price I forget what it is 220 or something like that but it, I think it's always on sale for right around 189 so at least 
I've noticed it there for a while. So a little less money, but a little less features too. All right, guys. Hey, uh, thanks, Patreons. Appreciate all the support. Uh, thanks, Hioki, for providing the meters. Uh, that's really awesome. And can't wait to do this one. And uh, thanks for everybody watching videos. We hit 10,000 subscribers. That's just amazing. And hey, please subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, just hit that little subscription down there. That, that helps a lot. That's a free way to support the channel. Um, also, another free way is to use the links down below uh, for any of these meters or any of the links I have down below. Appreciate that as well. And for everybody watching videos and commenting and all that stuff. And I do try to respond to all the comments. I've been challenged lately. Uh, so I go to the subscribers first and then I start hitting another one. So uh, subscribe and you'll have a better chance of me answering. I mean, I think I've answered all the subscribers so far, I think. <laughs> all right. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, we'll see you next time.